Hey guys, how's it going? Tess back again with episode number 8 of the Atletico Madrid career mode series here on Xbox One. And the first game in today's episode is a massive one. It's away at the Bernabeu. It is the Madrid derby. It's one of the biggest games in Spanish football. Obviously not quite as big as the uh, as the Clasico, but with the, the improvement with uh, Atletico Madrid over the past couple of years, it really is a massive tie. And we need points. We need to close the gap to the teams at the top of the table because we had a lot of action yesterday, but not maximum points. Picking up a, a point against Osasuna and a win against Valladolid has some Champions League action and we will do it again today, but we're starting off in the league and Casillas makes a great save from Diego Costa there. Really athletic diving save down to his left-hand side. It was destined for for the back of the net was going to nestle in that bottom corner if it weren't for the uh, Spanish number one goalkeeper diving away and keeping us out. But we were keeping the pressure up in the in the early stages. David Villa is going to find Koke, find Diego Costa again. First shot is blocked, and unfortunately they are going to be able to clear it away rather than us be able to, uh, to have a meaningful chance on goal. But we still weren't done. The early pressure continued. Diego Costa involved again into David Villa. And watch Costa. He's going to make a bursting run off the back of the defender. Marcelo doesn't track him. Fantastic first touch and an even better first time finish into that far bottom corner to give us a 1-0 lead. And it was all about that first touch. The defensive mistake from Marcelo. And then just, again, watch the first touch. It really is crucial. Just settles the flight of the ball right into his path beautifully to then hit first time in into the bottom corner and we take a convincing 1-0 lead and we've been on top in the first half and I was a little bit disappointed with Real Madrid uh, I have to be honest they weren't as uh, offensive as I expected them to be and we almost caught them napping again David Villa breaking beyond the line but unfortunately his first time volley wasn't able to find the target and uh, Real Madrid are actually going to come up the other end now just before half time to cause us some problems they go up great header from uh, from Sergio Ramos there and fortunately Thibaut Courtois is behind it to keep them at bay but the pressure isn't gone yet Pepe's going to pick the ball up just outside uh, just outside the box and we're going to actually nick it off him Koke is going to send David Villa away now David Villa of times gone past would have absolutely raced away there but unfortunately his advancing years mean he's not quite as fast as he used to be and Koke gets the ball nicked off him by Pepe and uh, that's just one thing that we don't quite have in this side just yet is the explosive pace of a striker David Villa just is a little bit slower than uh, I perhaps might like him to be Diego Costa is fast enough but doesn't have the electric pace of say Luis Muriel that we bought in at Chelsea in the pre previous career mode series so maybe that's something we need to look into for uh, maybe January or the next summer but at uh, the minute we're doing okay with the, with the squad that we've got David Villa and Diego Costa are both chipping in with goals as is Adrian so we're, ho we're hoping to uh, you know cause enough problems for teams as things stand with uh, the players that we have in the current squad and it took another great save from uh, Ike Casillas there to keep us out stop us from extending our lead but Ronaldo just batters his way through my defensive line there. Unfortunately, it's another good save from Thibaut Courtois that uh, keeps them out and Marcelo is denied down towards the bottom left-hand corner. The corner's going to come in, Pepe's going to go up and there's just a man free. It's uh, something that has become uh, a bit of an issue so far. In yesterday's episode with, uh, with the Celtic game, we had a couple of uh, players that didn't have their runs tracked and don't know whether you actually saw that. It's Edin Zeko, the player that uh, pots the ball into the back of the net. A player that I really didn't expect to uh, to be in the uh, the Real Madrid starting lineup. But uh, you'll see from this run here again, it's the defender not picking up the run, and he comes around the back of him. Ronaldo really should have done better with that header there. But I'm going to make a change. I I just can't lose this game. We just can't lose any more ground to the teams above us. So uh, I brought Diego on and I switched to a 4-5-1 and uh, put Diego Costa up top on his own just to try and hold out. So uh, unfortunately, David Villa is having to come off and make way, but he's done enough already to uh, to ensure that we're going to take a point from this game. And uh, that man, Diego, didn't really have too much to do. And uh, fortunately, we were able to hold out and take a point against our fierce local rivals, which is exactly what we needed to do. We needed that point more so than anything else and we actually got an international job offer a big one as well it's the England manager's job now in the Chelsea career mode we did get the England manager's job offered to us and we accepted it and uh, went to the World Cup with them and in the current gen the first current gen career mode we did with Tottenham we got the France job and went to the World Cup at 2014 as well but I'm not going to do that this time I, I don't think I'm planning on doing any international management offers or jobs in this particular career mode series at least until perhaps the Euros in 2016 16. So we're going to concentrate on La Liga and that's exactly what we're going to do right now. We've got El Maria just two days after the game against Real Madrid. As you can see, we're still sat ninth, but we've still got that crucial game in hand. But El Maria are above us. They've got a further game in hand on us 
and are abovising the table. So they're definitely not going to be easy work in, uh, in this game. They're clearly having a great start to the season, which is unexpected. You have to say Almeria are one of the smaller teams in La Liga, but uh, clearly they have the talent in the squad to cause us problems. And they did exactly that through Rodri here. So much power on that shot. Unfortunately for us, it cannons back off the post and we're able to clear it. We're actually going to catch them on a counter-attack. A lovely ball through for Afolai. He's trying to uh, close it down, but unfortunately Nelson, the right back, is so fast and he shows great strength as well to hold Afolai off. Looks as if he's going to clear it for a goal kick, but um, uh, unfortunately for him, it cannons back off Nelson. We pick up a corner and uh, it's actually Christian Rodriguez that's going to whip it in. We're going to try and win the header and get ourselves in front if we possibly can. Aldevarel goes up and as he has done numerous times already this season, his technique for the header lets him down and he handballs it. Fortunately, he's in the opposition penalty box this time and doesn't give away a penalty and Adrian comes even closer to getting us in front there. Another spectacular uh, acrobatic attempt, but unfortunately the goalkeeper is on hand and uh, this time the ball's going to come back in and Afolai is going to try and get the header. Can't quite get up to it. Thiago, another shot that just isn't quite accurate enough and we go in at half-time at 0-0. So we came at them after the break. We really needed to make sure that we can pick up a win, especially considering we only picked up a point against uh, against Real and Rodriguez goes even closer. Not only was it a little bit closer towards the target, it actually cannon back off the outside of the post. So we've come as close as Almeria now. We've both hit the post. We've both had a chance to hit the post and Thiago has to finish that. You cannot get a better opportunity in a game like this where both teams are struggling to score. You're six yards out for goal. It's just absolutely gaping. There's no one within five yards of him and he blazes it over the top of the bar. Cannot even imagine how frustrated I was when he did that. This game was really starting to get to me. It was so, so competitive and so hard to actually create anything of any particular note. But you'll see here, Adrian plays a lovely one-two with Afolai. Afolai makes the bursting run off the initial pass. And look at Gila Voga at the back post. Peels away. There's a little bit of space and he's just able to get there for the stood-up cross towards the back post. And we get ourselves the one goal that we needed to win the game. It was always going to be a one-goal game, this one. And we were the team that we're going to get it. We get a crucial, very, very vital three points. I was delighted to be able to come out of that with a win. So we head into the third game of the episode, which is again in the Champions League, and again two days after the previous game. So we've again got a rotation side, more so similar to the side that played against Real Madrid in the opening game, and were able to get a point from that one. But we were hoping for better fortunes this time around. We obviously lost our opening game in the Champions League yesterday against Celtic, and as you can see, Pacos Ferreira actually beat Juventus in their opening game. So they're clearly not to be underestimated. They're clearly a side that can do us some damage. But I have to be honest, I don't know anything about them. My uh, my Portuguese league knowledge isn't as good as it could be, I have to admit. I only really know, you know, detailed information about Benfica, Sporting and Porto. And uh, perhaps Braga, because they've been in Europe a couple of times in the uh, in the Europa League and played against Liverpool, etc. An English team. But um, I don't know anything about Pacos Ferreira. So I was going into this one blind, but hoping to... Uh, to not necessarily underestimate them because we've done that previously like we did with Celtic and it cost us. But at the same time, I felt quietly confident that we were going to be able to pick up a result. And we got fortunate to get the early goal here to go 1-0 up. The, the first shot was blocked, but it fell back to David Villa. And it was a poacher's finish. It was a David Villa finish. That's the sort of goal that you see from him time and time again in an Atletico Madrid shirt, in a Spain shirt, in a Barcelona shirt, in a Valencia shirt. It's just what he does. He's a clinical finisher and... He almost did the same there. It was only a fantastic double save from the Pacos Ferreira goalkeeper that kept us out and stopped us from increasing our lead. And Villa plays a gorgeous ball over the cross to Susayeta. Had the opportunity to sweat it there. I didn't. I took the goalkeeper on. Was able to get it past him. Dinked it over. But the defender was on the cover. Able to, uh, to hook it clear off the line. And again, deny us that two goal advantage which we so craved. But we were able to get possession yet again. Breaking on them just before half time. Diego Costa into our two into Arda Turan. Lovely ball over the top. David Villa takes it first time. Because we'd had so many chances that we hadn't taken, I found myself starting to snatch at opportunities, trying to uh, just force the issue. But I had so much space there, I should have just taken it down, composed myself a little bit, and made sure that the ball went into the back of the net. But we're still not done for the first half. The bombardment continues. One Fran picks the ball up out wide. Gorgeous whip in. Villa on the end of it again. And again, it's a wasted chance. The ball goes past the goal past the uh, the far post and again it's a chance that really should have been finished and uh, something that in real life David Villa definitely would have gobbled that up with both hands but into the second half we go there's actually a considerable amount into the second half before we had the first opportunity but what an opportunity it was Gabby striking the inside of the post we come even closer to picking up the second goal that we 
I have to be honest, I felt like we needed to be able to uh, to get a win out of this game. And uh, we had to rely on Thibaut Courtois to stop them from uh, from getting themselves back into it there. And uh, they're going to come at me again. Antonio, Rodrigo Antonio is going to pass the ball out to Carlao. He's going to play the 1-2. He's going to reverse it back to him. Or so I thought before he smashed the ball unexpectedly off the off the post. I was just waiting for that second pass and it didn't come. Cut inside and rifled it and we got fortunate yet again. And Diego Costa is going to cut inside beautifully here. Surely it's just a case of putting it in the back of the net but he doesn't. He gets all excited. Gets his left foot underneath it and blazes it over the top of the bar. And we still haven't sealed the deal. We haven't killed the game off. Can we do it in the final stages? David Villa plays Diego Costa through again and again the goalkeeper comes to the rescue one friend the chance isn't dead yet and Diego Costa there rather than committing to the challenge absolutely bottles it and just waves his backside at the defender fortunately his cowardice doesn't cost us the result and we are able to take a 1-0 win from that so we've got three points in the Champions League now from the opening two games we're up into the European spots now in La Liga. Only one point off the lead. As you can see, we sit fifth. It's so close at the top. Just three points separate the top nine teams with Real Madrid and Sevilla up, up there on, uh, on 14. Then three teams on 13, two on 12. And uh, then, of course, you've got two on 11 and one on 10 as well. So it's very, very close at the top. But that's going to bring this one to a close, guys. So thank you very much for watching. Please do feel free to leave the video a like. If you could be so kind, that would be absolutely superb. If we could hit over 100 again, I'd be absolutely adoring of your of your abilities to support the channel, which you've done superbly well over the past couple of weeks. Since this series started, since the My Player series started, which if you missed it, by the way, there was an episode last night of the My Player series. So feel free to check the channel page if you missed that. If you missed yesterday's episode of this series, there's an annotation on the screen over the little play button there in the end slate and if you aren't subscribed to the channel then feel free to do so there's a link in the description the normal subscribe button on your screen and an annotation on screen on the right hand side there and feel free to follow me on twitter as well to keep up with everything that goes on with me and the chesnoid gaming channel at chesnoid gaming is the twitter handle but that's all for today guys thank you very much for watching hope you pull an, a team of the week player in ultimate team tonight because of course it is wednesday and uh, i will see you tomorrow